there are questions about the what happens after and what Israel wants to see, whether Israel wants to occupy Gaza and who you really want to see operate in that power vacuum. Well, what should it look like? It'll be a power vacuum. What I'd like to see is a non-Hamas uh, civilian administration there with an Israeli military responsibility, overall military responsibility. That's the only thing that would uh, work. In other words, military occupation of the Gaza Strip, that is exactly what Benjamin Netanyahu very clearly laid out in the clip that you just watched. And by doing so, he once again made an embarrassment out of the American president, Joe Biden, who has on multiple occasions said that he is against Israeli occupation of the Gaza Strip. That is what he claims. That is what the media claims he says. But this whole good cop, bad cop thing is not really flying with me anymore because Biden has leverage, he knows he has leverage, and he just approved another billion dollar weapons transfer to Israel after pretending like he was gonna halt weapons to Israel pending their invasion into Rafah, which they are still bombing as we speak. Now the administration has been pushing Israel to think past their military offensive and just maybe consider the question of how Gaza should be governed after the war. Here are some more details. The Biden administration has been pushing Netanyahu to accept the Palestinian Authority to run Gaza after the war. And that would unlock some of the larger proposals that the Biden team has been pursuing, especially unlocking Arab participation in the day after plan. And this week, Jake Sullivan made another criticism public. He said that Netanyahu needed to embrace some kind of political strategy, those goals that he wanted to achieve in order to win this war. And US officials tell me that that call has not been heated. That call has not been heated. <laughs> Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. Let's talk a little more about what Blinken warned on Sunday. Again, I, I, I'm at a point now where I'm not willing to take what our government officials are saying at face value because they say one thing and then they turn around and either provide cover for Israel or they continue asking for more weapons or sending more weapons to Israel. But nonetheless, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said this on Sunday, quote, Israel's on the trajectory potentially to inherit an insurgency with many armed Hamas left or if Israel leaves a vacuum filled by chaos filled by anarchy and probably filled by Hamas. I feel like that statement seems to be pretty supportive of an Israeli occupation. But you know, some are interpreting this as, you know, the US not feeling confident that Israel um, is, is gonna leave the Gaza Strip. I, I think that the US is totally fine. I'm, I, the current government of the United States, I would venture to say, is actually totally fine with Israel occupying the Gaza Strip. I say that because they keep rewarding Israel regardless of what they do. And you don't reward a government, a foreign government, after they tell you that they're gonna do exactly what you claim you don't want them to do. Now, the push to oppose Israeli rule over Gaza um, after the war isn't just coming from the outside. Actually, I think you hear even stronger protests within the Israeli government in regard to occupying Gaza, if you can believe it or not, including from Netanyahu's own defense minister, Yoav Gallant, who publicly challenged Benjamin Netanyahu to commit to opposing Israeli military rule in Gaza, which of course Netanyahu has shown absolutely no interest in doing. אני קורא לראש הממשלה, בנימין נתניהו, לקבל החלטה ולהכריז כי ישראל לא תשלוט אזרחית ברצועת עזה, כי לא יתקיים ממשל צבאי ישראלי ברצועת עזה, ותקודם מיידית אלטרנטיבה שלטונית לחמאס ברצועת עזה. זו חובתנו ואחריותנו להוביל את המדינה למקום טוב יותר. עכשיו, כרגע, זו המשמרת שלנו. And Gallant went even further, warning in his press conference that Israeli military rule over Gaza is a terrible idea. 
Indecision is, in essence, a decision. This leads to a dangerous course, which promotes the idea of Israeli military and civilian governance in Gaza. This is a negative and dangerous option for the state of Israel, strategically, militarily, and from a security standpoint. We must make tough decisions for the future of our country, favoring national priorities above all other possible considerations, even with the possibility of personal or political costs. Those personal or political costs that he's speaking about is a direct reference to Netanyahu. There are senior US officials who I speak to, Jeff, who are increasingly concerned that Netanyahu is prolonging the war in order to remain prime minister. Mm, Netanyahu no like that. He no like that. Look, if I had seen you know, Yoav Gallant's statements on their own without any further context, I would say this is all theater. I don't believe him for a second because I don't look, I'm not a fan of Gallant either. However, when you take a look at how incensed Netanyahu is and how hard he's fighting to now basically do away with Gallant, I think Gallant is actually being genuine here. You know, that's not to say that I'm in favor of everything Gallant has ever done, but it seems like he does genuinely see it problematic for the Israeli military to occupy the Gaza Strip from here on out. Now, in response, Bibi put out his own video shooting back at Gallant and basically said that there was no point in discussing what will happen after the war because Hamas is not yet defeated, which by the way, the US has put out its own report recently saying that it is unlikely that Israel is going to defeat Hamas. We'll get to that later. Let's watch. Therefore, all the talk about the day after, while Hamas remains intact, will remain mere words devoid of content. Contrary to what is being claimed, for months we have been engaged in various efforts to resolve this complex problem. In any case, there's no alternative to military victory. The attempt to bypass it with this or that claim is simply detached from reality. There's one alternative to victory, defeat, military, diplomatic, and national defeat. Now, uh, Gallant claims that there has been absolutely no planning for the day after the war ends. In fact, he says that his ideas were never even debated by the cabinet and no alternative had been proposed. And uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, Gallant's internal criticism was echoed Wednesday by yet another government official, Benny Gantz, who, uh, a, who was a member of the war cabinet, who said Gallant was speaking the truth. And to be clear, Gallant is also a member of the ruling Likud party, and he is not a dove. Again, like I don't want anyone to think like, oh, there's like this peace-loving left wing within the Israeli coalition or Israeli government that's fighting back against Netanyahu. No, you have like the extreme right, and then you have you know the still pretty right wing hawkish members of the government as well, and that consists of Benny Gantz and Yoav Gallant. Now. He's been overwhelmingly supportive of Israel's war. You've seen some of the statements coming from him. And to be clear, Gallant is, again, a member of the Likud party, and that is a right wing party within Israel. So the extremist members of Netanyahu's coalition are now slamming Gallant and publicly calling for him to be replaced. National Security Minister, you've heard of this guy before, Itamar Ben Gavir, demanded his immediate termination, tweeting that from Gallant's point of view, there is no difference between whether Gaza is controlled by IDF soldiers or whether Hamas murderers control it. He's not the only far right member of the government who's speaking out against Gallant. You also have Bazalel Smotrich who said in a video posted to X, Defense Minister Gallant today announced his support for the establishment of a Palestinian terrorist state. He did not say Palestinian terrorist state. He said he does not want the IDF to occupy the Gaza Strip, but let me continue. A reward for terrorism and Hamas, Gallant's plan would pave the way for the establishment of an Arab terrorist state and for Hamas to take over Judea and Samaria as well. It is rich considering the past that people like Smotrich and Ben Gavir have to call other people terrorists. But nonetheless, let me continue. Referring to the West Bank by its biblical names when he mentions Judea and Sumeria, of course. A government in which we are members will not establish a Palestinian state and will not endanger the existence of the state of Israel. 
So there you have it. Uh, there are some growing divisions within the Israeli government. You also have growing divisions among Israeli civilians. I mean, we've seen the protests who uh, demand that Netanyahu be ousted from power. Netanyahu uh, wants to continue this war because it's the safest way for him to remain in power. And that is infuriating the protesters, especially the family members of the hostages who feel that the government of Israel has not done much or hasn't done enough to bring the hostages home. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.